1993, my wife and I stayed in Palau to just look around. We hired a guide. He took us to a rock island where there was something jutting out from the shore. It was a 65-foot wing. And that 65-foot wing um, essentially changed my life. The markings indicated that it belonged to an American World War II plane. I just felt a loss. Nobody knew what happened to the crew. Somewhere there was more to that plane and more to the story. If nobody knows anything about what happened, I was going to find out. The only thing worse and going off and participating in a war is going off and participating in a war and not ever getting to come home. Unbeknownst to my family, Pat had been looking for my grandfather's specific B-24 for about a decade. In 2005, the aircraft was actually found and I and my family are incredibly lucky to be the benefactor of his efforts and his generosity. God could do anything that he wanted. Instead, this is his passion. I have an unparalleled level of respect for Dr. Scannon. In one month on Peleliu, the 1st Marine Division suffered upwards of 5,000 casualties. I grew up knowing about the horrors of war. My mom was a European who was deeply affected by World War II. She lived through the bombings and managed to come home and become an American citizen. 78,000 missing from World War II. We believe there's about 70 to 80 MIAs that are potentially recoverable within the barrier reefs of Palau. By finding them, we can both honor their sacrifice and answer questions that their families have never been able to get. I had been coming to Palau since 1993 searching for these aircraft. Around 2000, I realized I needed to form a team. I formed the Bent Prop Project. About the time we realized that we simply were at the limit of our capabilities, we met the folks from Scripps and University of Delaware. Their technology changed everything. Our focus originally when we were coming out were strictly oceanographic research, and over the last two years has transitioned to spanning both the research with the latest technology as well as doing these World War II recovery searches. You can just see the sparkle in Pat's eyes when you start telling him about what kind of things we might be able to add to the program in terms of how quickly we can survey. One of the things we've been doing out here is taking the robots and scanning the seafloors. I think that started to get the gears turning with both groups saying, hey, let's take the technology that we've been developing and start scanning some of the areas where they see a lot of potential targets. Plow was really a grand challenge for us to test out technology as well as serving the entire mission of getting some closure to the families. Your technology is only as good as your human element. Oceanographic research is all about understanding the unknown. Kind of almost defining a new field here where we're looking at not just ocean research, but we're doing digital preservation. And everything has got the march of time of it underwater. For a lot of these wrecks won't be the way they are a decade from now. We can actually create an entire scene at the final resting spot, a lot of these aircraft. A moment of U.S. history underwater. Nine years ago, we found some aluminum in a mangrove swamp. That aluminum was the wing of a TBM Avenger. We searched for the rest of the plane and could find no more evidence. 
Years later, a Palawan local told us the story. He saw an airplane get hit and lose its wing. One person jumped, his parachute opened. He was able to swim to shore and was immediately executed by the Japanese. And the after action reports talked about how the guys at 8,000 feet watching him said that he splashed in the water a few hundred yards from the beach. It seemed like some very actionable information that we could then plan a search around. Somewhere out here, there's a fuselage possibly with two MIAs on it. One man made it off the plane, but two didn't. And so the plane is somewhere here. That's what we're looking for. My uh, guess is that the highest probability area will be the section that 344 is surveying now. Over. One of the challenges of doing these acoustic side scan surveys in Palau and in coral reef environments is you've got coral heads that look a lot like other debris that could be on the seafloor. And so you've got a lot of what we call clutter. This looks like a bunch of debris. Yeah. It might be little pieces. I think this is your money spot. It'd be worth seeing what that is. If there is a place it ought to be, it's right here. But, you know, I don't want to curse it either. And this was late in the afternoon. The tide is coming out and the visibility is getting bad. Eric Terrell had his navigator, which is a handheld sonar unit. Found a little target, came up to it, it was clearly man-made. It was clearly aviation. It looked like the vertical stabilizer of the Avenger. I looked at it and my heart jumped into my mouth. Looking at the targets, I even saw some larger ones. So I swam ahead. At that point in time, I'd lost bent prop. Out of the darkness looms this great big mass. You're approaching what's hallowed ground. Two of our guys are, are still on board that aircraft. The others weren't there to, to share that moment with me. I think they were still focused on the smaller pieces. So I swam back. Eric comes swimming up to us with his navigator. He pulls me by the arm, and I'm telling you, he pulled me. It's like there was no discussion there. It took us about 20 meters. And I see this big blur, and as we start swimming closer to it, 
there is an aircraft. When I touch the aluminum of the fuselage, the emotions start flooding in. Tears came to my eyes. It cements the reality of the things that had gone on that day that resulted in this aircraft being there. I think it's very important for us to remember what these airmen and their families have sacrificed. The families have not begun to realize the significance of this moment.